Hi guys, my name is Seven back again today with part 3 of my redo of Spyro 4 Enter the Dragonfly. Last time we uh, completed Crop Circle Country, which wasn't too bad as I expected, to be honest. And today we are starting level 3, Luau Island. And so we'll just talk to this fat pig first. We only needed 15 dragonflies to get this level, but we've definitely got more than that. You got enough dragonflies to get the boat up and running. Hop aboard. Hop aboard. Okay, um, go on a second. <coughs> Like a oh, sea shell boat. So I remember when I first played this level, I just seen this boat shifting along the river for about a minute. It was so tantalizing, but we're probably only going to get to see it for like 20 seconds on the emulator. So that's like awesome. It's like, hmm, what kind of shell is that? It just looks like a shell boat. <laughs> Pretty cool, actually. With a little wee lighthouse on top of it. But yeah, Luau Island, this is actually a pretty cool level. It's a bit stressful at times because it's quite hard to make ledges because sometimes if you clearly manage to actually get onto a ledge, it glitches out and you sort of bump off of it. So here we are in Luau Island, a very Caribbean-like level with very fitting music. This music just it sounds very Hawaii-like. Many people say this level reminds them a lot in Spongebob because it seems like a sort of music you hear in Spongebob and it just seems like a very Spongebob-y sort of level and not only that but it kind of reminds me in this Spongebob game I had for the very short time I actually had a Xbox and that was I think it was Battle of Bikini, Bikini Bottom I'm really not sure but I never completed the game I remember most levels had the same soundtrack but this level reminds me a lot in that and yeah it definitely does seem like a Madagascar Caribbean sort of beach and my voice croaked there I know and I think this is the only level in the game that actually has uh, gems inside of an item that's not either a chest or a bottle, not a vase, but um, yeah, it's got these little tikis that have gems inside them in this level, but the rest of the levels don't have any other items casing gems. But yes, annoyingly this is a mostly underwater level, and as for any Spyro game, I'm not very fond of the underwater levels, so with Spyro 4 being even harder underwater, that's just annoying. <laughs> but... This level has one of the very few uh, two challenges I do not actually mind. There's a challenge of Hunter in this level, it's a little bit annoying, but it's doable and it's not that frustrating. But, and there's also a hard challenge in this level, but it's actually enjoyable. You can just do it over and over and you don't mind because it's such a fun little mini game to do, but we'll get to it when we get there. And you may notice, yeah, that these little uh, underwater riptocks make the same noises as the octopi from uh, Seashell Shore in Spyro 3. Like, this, like I said, the enemy sound effects reuse a lot of sound effects from Spyro 3, not Spyro 2 funnily enough, but um, also all these little underwater glowing flowers, for those of you who knew the Madagascar game on the PS2, that reminds me a lot of those flowers that we have to keep um, roaring at to collect bees, yeah we had to take bees to the flowers, that's it, sorry, and that reminds me of those missions where they take us to the flowers, take us to the flowers, but uh, if you don't know the game you probably don't know what I'm yapping on about right now, um, I never got that gem don't think. So yeah, I quite often listen to this soundtrack actually, I, back when I was actually still in college, um, I um, used to listen to this soundtrack a lot while I was doing my studies, because I found sp Spyro music, <laughs> Spyro music used to always actually keep me calm and everything, uh, and this soundtrack I found had a sad tone to it, but it was also quite upbeat. And you may have noticed that those little tiki guys are actually returned from Spyro 2 as well, I've not brought back a few enemies from Spyro 2. Like, I mentioned those monks and such, but they bring back sound effects from Spyro 3, but they bring back enemies from Spyro 2. And that's those tikis from Idle Springs, with their little sausage skewers. You never even saw me that one, did you see that? And you see that little boat stuck behind that net there. It's like, oh no, it's just one, it's, oh no, there's a few. I'm assuming that's probably our one right there though, which is pretty cool, because you see where we got off. It's quite cool how like the level starts actually where you technically got off, because... A lot of levels just start off with a wall behind you, so... <laughs> I think inside this clamshell, this magnificent, ma ginormous clamshell, there's some gems inside it. So this is probably one of my favourite levels in the game. It's very upbeat and you don't want to quit it so soon. <laughs> and it's a relatively simple level. But the underwater parts can be a bit frustrating, but thankfully the challenges within it are not intimidating. They're pretty fun. Gooey! And also we get our third um, rune in this game, the Wing Shield. So this is pretty much the only one that doesn't give us a breath ability. Oh, this is this actually reminds me, I don't know, it's reminding me a lot in this episode of Tom and Jerry. I can't think which one though. But it's like, dun, 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 d
I don't know, that like Tom and Jerry like stuck in the Caribbean island and uh, when <laughs> to uh, Jerry dresses up as this little wee, I don't even know what he dresses up as, um, gets him to start making soup with himself in the pan and it's just so funny seeing Tom sweating away and everything, it's just funny when I'm trying to get a lot of dragonfly. Uh, that's another thing, I was quite far away from that enemy who's over there and you can hear him as if he was very near. I was mentioning that in part one. Like you hear those little tourist tourist dinosaurs going cooey. Oh Gary. Hey, it's Gary. Hey, it's Gary. So that's clearly a male one. Gary's quite a weird name for a pit. I love the detail they actually put into some levels in this game. Just all these little dangling flowers and everything. So much scenery to look at in these levels. They're very gorgeous. And there we go. These are them tourists. Yes, I was meaning to mention this in the previous part. I think Square Eye Jack said that we're like brutally murdering or something. Like we're brutally murdering, br murdering innocent tourists. And believe me, they're not innocent because they do hurt you if you stand around long enough. And I will simply lose a bit of health just to prove that to you. They hit us with the cameras. Or they do something to hurt us. Hang on. See, there we go. He hit us. Told ya, but it's, it's very hard to get them to actually hurt you, so it can be very easily mistaken for them saying, these guys don't hurt you, we're just killing innocent tourists, but no, nah, they can hurt you, it's just very hard to get them to hurt you, because <laughs> I even tried to let them hurt me and I actually struggled, so, yeah, it's probably just something they never fixed. <laughs> I just noticed you can actually see a little peril sitting on top of that clam up there, that's pretty cool. So we already freed the first pig because the Reptox are planning to cook them for a luau feast. Oh, I didn't speak to him before freeing him. Sorry. No problem. I'll keep a nose out for your friends. I can hear them roasting in the distance. <laughs> oh, not cool. Spyro, not fucking cool. Yeah, I'm roasting you now. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure to roast all your other friends too, alright? That was not a joke. I'm not just kidding. Triangle. Yeah, this music does really fit the level very well. It just sounds like a Caribbean soundtrack. And initially, actually, when I first played this level, I just thought SpongeBob as well. And I thought it was quite funny how Alex mentioned it too in our Let's Play. If you want to check out our Let's Play, just be sure to check out our unlisted playlist of my natural Let's Plays of this game. Um, I think Alex enjoyed this level. She she enjoyed the occasional level when we were playing it. But um, I think I've just decided I'm going to stop being such a... I, I don't know. I just, I, I always have to have everything goes that way. If I start something, I just can't stop, and it's just like, she wanted to sort of stop the Let's Plays after a while, and I was just like, oh god, but um, nah, I think I've been too much of a bitch during this, so. Yeah, when I first played this level here, I thought we had to do something like, the, oh, whoops. We had to, stop it, stop it, Spyro. That we had to actually stomp on these, like, back and forth, and they eventually gradually go up themselves, but that's not the case at all. But did you see how glitchy that platform was? There we go, I just slid right off that. There's a lot of platforms like that in this level that if you jump from platform to platform you won't land on one because all of a sudden you'll jolt off to the side and you'll fall, so just have to be very careful with your jumps, even if you are careful, you won't always necessarily make it. Ten, ten. Yeah, they were both worth ten, those gems. Dun 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 two. I wonder if there's any more zero uh gold gems in the game. I definitely remember that one from Crop Soccer Country. Yeah, this level is definitely a very pretty one. I think it's probably one of my new favourites. For a while it was like, well I think it's still one of them is Honey Marsh, but I think Honey Marsh can be a bit frustrating and glitchy play times, but yeah, this one's actually pretty cool. It's pretty hard to get everything though, with it being underwater level. It's quite easy to miss gems, and I remember when I was playing it with Alex, I was looping through the level over and over and over to find this gem that I missed, and I eventually found it after ages of looking, but yeah, this level's pretty hard to 100% complete in the first round. You always have to go back through and make sure you haven't missed any gems in this level, because Quite often you tend to be up in the air getting gems, like charging things, and you're not actually checking the floor. So we'll just go through here now. Do that. See, and also underwater, um, Sparks is not as good at picking up gems. Very Lilo and Stitchy, I said, Drag. It kind of reminds me of Lilo and Stitch Struggle in Paradise. So I think this is quite an original level on their part, even though it does, like, rehash some enemies from Idle Springs. It's We've never really had so much of a Caribbean-like level in other Spyro games. And it's quite a nice chirpy level, this one. I quite like it. It's very upbeat and makes you feel happy to be alive. It's actually one of these sort of levels that if you go into it, you just sort of want to stay around for the scenery and that's it. And I kind of panicked there. I thought the scenery was going to disappear permanently there. <laughs> I literally said stay around for the scenery, just the scenery disappeared. Oh, the irony. But, oh, he's forcing us to talk to him. Because I didn't move there, he just moves himself if he 
clocks on someone. Oh well, that's very rude of you. He said that very flippantly. He said, oh, I, I heard you on the island, but I didn't believe it. He doesn't sound shocked with you, and I said, like, Spiral, I heard you on the island, but I didn't believe it. He said, like, Spiral? God, someone said you are on the island, but I didn't actually believe them. That wasn't very good acting. I was like, I heard you on the island, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> oh, yes, you'd make a perfect sandwich. I've got some bacon in my fridge right now, actually. I might make a bacon sarnie tomorrow. Bitch. So, yep, these are both five gems and one gem. And the apparently anything to see. They don't hurt you if you just like flame them straight away because it takes a lot to actually get them to hurt you, so <laughs> just like the enemies from Glimmer and Spyro 2, it's very hard to get hurt in that level because the lizards do not actually hurt you, but the pink lizards with the hammers, they do hurt you with their hammers eventually if you stay around long enough. And does that door open yeah, that door actually opens. But I think there's a door later on that just sort of plops off. It doesn't actually open up, it just disappears. Aha! Reuse sound effects from this, the Professor in Spyro 2 and 3. Oh, the Professor's not in this game, can think of it. But, yeah, did you recognise those sound effects from the Professor? The, aha! Ha! There you go, you're still going to become pork chops anyway. Oh, they're like little clam lights. See little lights forming around them. Oh, maybe not. That one doesn't have a light forming around it. Must have just been convenient then. I thought they were like clam light bulbs or something. So again, this is another one of those levels that have those head bashing switches that are the only reason for us having head bashing in this game because we could use another stuff, but it's not really necessary apart from head bashing switches. And it opens that gate down there so we can progress further onto the level. That's why I never collected everything down there because I'm just going back that way anyway. But I'm just, this is the part here. If you glide from ledge to ledge here, it quite often glitches out and you end up sort of popping lower down than you actually were, and then you end up not making this jump and you have some all the way back around to this point and do it again. So, fingers crossed, I do this right. Fuck! Fingers crossed doesn't mean shit. Okay, guys, I will check back in when I'm around to that part again because it takes so long to swim back around there. There we go, we're back up here again. I just realized there's another level with vocals in it, like, uh oh, 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 oh. It does sound very. Hawaii though, the actual sounds. There we go, made the jump that time. Right. So you sort of have to like, do the hover very soon there, otherwise if you just glide straight into it, you'll just sort of slide off the side because he's not very responsive to actually hitting things during his glide. He'll either just fall straight away or he'll slide a very random direction and come on camera angle. Do me do me a favour here. Oh, for God's sake. Okay guys, I'll see you back around there again. <laughs> Let's try that again. Right, we made it there. Hopefully we'll get across to this one now. Ah, there we go, some tiki's from Metal Springs again. And again, they would Brrrr! I can't quite remember what Rhinox make that noise, but I definitely know that that sound effect is from a Rhinox in one of the levels in Spyro 3, that Brrrr! Kinda like what though, but I remember those sound, e sound effects are definitely in Spyro 3. If you could tell me down below what sound effects uh, they go to in Spyro 3, and I just see... No, let me know, sorry. And I just see a red gem casually just sitting on the water there, that's probably from that. Uh, tiki I just killed there. For some reason if you kill a Tiki that's not from a water area, it'll just sort of sit on top of the water, like not recognising it as a liquid. It's hard to explain what I'm trying to say there. I've noticed when there's a lot of steam or flames on camera that it really lags the game. You see, it's really lagging. But this system can't really handle it. Now I noticed the kill technique Alex pointed out here is if you stay in this power-up, it'll keep on um, restarting if you stand in it and aim at these things. So you have, oh, but then again, an assembly will probably lag while I'm doing that. <laughs> but it's a pretty cool thing to know if you feel like the time's really against you on this challenge, but I think I'll be alright. Because you seem to get plenty of time to do it. But they all respawn, like, once the time's up. They don't leave the ones you haven't done just to go back into the power up and finish it off. You have to restart them again. Once you've destroyed all of these little targets, though these platforms will rise up. And be careful because there's another part, if you glide to these platforms and you don't, if you bump off it even slightly, he'll just sort of slide and fall. He won't land on it, so be careful. There we go. So to make sure you get good leverage before jumping over because this part's making me a bit more nervous. And there we go. That was very lucky because I actually thought it was going to fall there. And this could take a few blows with the bubbles to get this one because even when you clearly get them, you just keep doing it over and over until it actually eventually does because I think this one's called Homer actually. I definitely remember, yeah, yeah, I think this one up here, I remember going like, DOW when I saw his name when I first got this one. I don't think you could forget any name like Homer, though. 
Okay, that one's a nightmare to get. I'm clearly getting him. So that, that's bloody annoying me. God's sake. There we go. Homer, yeah. Hey, it's Homer. I'm Homer Simpson. I can't do his voice well at all. I am the smart. I am the smart. SMRT. I mean, SMARO. Oh, I didn't mean to go down quite yet. Oh, for God's sake, guys. I'll see you back around here. Right, we're back around here again. Yeah, I did remember there's still stuff down there I didn't get yet. But it's more important to get stuff up here first. Right, so we might as well go up here. And we jump down at this angle so that we land on a ledge that we can't reach from the bottom. But there's a ladder that goes up there for some reason. It's weird. I don't get it, but there we go. Here's another one of those tiggies that we get. Uh... Oh, we can just bubble them. We don't have to flame them or anything. We can use our bubbles to destroy them too. That's quite weird. Oh, and there's that gem thing on the water again. Yeah, I was just saying we have to hit another tiki to get a gem. Oh, I just electrocuted him. There we go. How many blows does it take to get him? Okay, two. There we go. Three goes. And Socrates. What a name is that? Pretty nice name. Whenever I say these names are weird, I don't mean it's a bad thing. Being weird is a good thing. And I've got my glass of coke right next to my laptop fan, so my coke's getting warm. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, gosh. Sorry. I know coke's not a very good thing for rehydrating you, but it's good enough. I just get pretty dehydrated on commentating. And I'll probably do a long play of this, like I'll redo this long play in HD without me talking. If any of you want a no commentary version of this, I'll just redo a long play of this and not talk. Because I know to cater to everyone, because there's some self opinion self opinion to me, the people who think only their opinion matters. It's probably the cage person saying like, oh, your voice is so annoying, stop commentating this idiot. I'm like, well, people want commentary, people don't. I can't level myself out between them, so I have to do take up more of my time to do it. No commentary in a comedy version, so... Yes, it is. Hello, I'm the sausage grinder. No well, I'm the sausage burner. Like. I, I was born this way. <laughs> right, okay. So, I'm not the sausage grinder, I'm the pork burner. There we go. There we go, yeah. You made a mishap there. You made a little wee grammatical error. You're still toast. Okay, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> oh, sitting there, I thought the music got out and stopped. But, um, uh, yeah, this is a pretty wide open level. I think there's still a fair bit to go, and I feel like I've done quite a lot. But, I think this must be one of the levels of 900. 900 gems. Come on. I, I could have sworn I never hit that TD, but never mind. And the sound effects of smashing those vases occurred late. And we'll we'll go under the water to get stuff under here once we've gotten everything on the surface. Just so that we can prioritize things. Yeah, you can clearly see where they just tried to cram in lots of gems here. To put in more gems levels. There's a lot of bottles here that you can't imagine being placed. It just doesn't seem like they would be placed here. <laughs> oh, oh, we need more fodder, I think. We'll turn this little wee dodo into or pelican, don't know what it is, into chicken. Or duck, or whatever it wants to be called. Meat. <laughs> Do whoops. Gooey. See a lot of tourists I got up here. Oh, come you see like American people come over to the buses in Scotland while wearing their kilts and such. Whereas people do wear kilts up here, but like special occasions and such. I, I never really see many people wearing kilts up here unless they're like at a wedding or something. So it's, it's pretty funny seeing like American people come off the buses in their kilts and that. But it's kind of sweet at the same time, hey. <laughs> That's pretty good effects. Can you know quite often when on a very hot sunny day and if you look off in the distance quite often it looks like the scenery is wobbling. I quite like how they added that effects there. Like just above that torch, you actually have that wobbling wall. That's very well done how they actually thought to do that. That's one thing I do like about this game, as laggy as it is, I think in terms of graphics their attention to detail is pretty good. So just charge that. Gooey! Die! <laughs> God, he actually looks like he's taking a dump and then he tried so hard he turned into wood. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh! There was a dragonfly in amongst those chests. Is there? Yeah. There's a dragonfly here, I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah, there is. <laughs> it's quite well hidden. Oh, I got one blow. Daisy! Who's Daisy? That was a terrible impression of Daisy from Mario. Apparently Daisy was uh, re replaced uh, Princess Peach in one of the Mario games when it was passed on to someone else. So therefore, Daisy still is in Mario games now, but only as a spin-off character. 
And it's really weird how I can't do these little swimmer glitches in the emulator. I wonder, did they just fix that glitch for the emulator or something? Because I could definitely do it on the PS2. Which is really weird. So an underwater part again, so we'll just be sure that it's so weird, it looks like we could clearly go under there, but now it's like an out of bounds sort of area. But yeah, we're at an underwater park again, so we'll make sure we don't miss anything. <laughs> triangle. I keep thinking of triangle whenever I hear like that channel, like triangle. I just wonder, did they literally. Were the time constraints really that bad that they couldn't even like create a pink gem to like. instead of having the gold to represent both the 10 and the 25? Because I could have sworn in the actual trailer they had already made the 25 gem, because I could have sworn I saw a 25. Well, a uh, pink gem being collected in the trailer of Spyro. You can check it out yourself, actually, because you can just search up Spyro 4 in the Dragonfly trailer, and it'll come up with it. And you'll see at the very start, he collects a pink gem, so... I wonder why they removed it. And yeah, I know I missed some stuff back there, but I just thought I'd get some stuff in front of me while I was at it. Pretty sure there's a gem here that I actually missed when I did my lips with that. There's one tucked in right behind here, yes. That's quite an easy one to miss. I got zero one one for that. So I think we've cleared this area of gems, so while we are at it, we'll just do this portal challenge that's right here. This is one hunter that's not too bad, it's pretty easy, it's just not that fun. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever lost it yet when I've played this game. <laughs> oh my back hurts! <laughs> yeah, for some reason the sound glitches out quite a lot in the emulator, it just sort of uh, stops halfway through at times. <clears throat> Hey Spyro, I was out here checking out my baby manta ray farm and those stupid very kind of talks of dun, dun, dun. Let's race to see who could capture more of them before time runs out. I've got a typical soundtrack here in Country Western things. I'm pretty sure I heard that soundtrack in Brats Over Diamonds. Brats Passion for Fashion Diamonds. Sorry. Capture the baby manta rays? Yes, it's actually captured the baby manta rays. But it said it as a question, like you will do it. <laughs> right. So, I can't remember how many we have to get the Manta Rays, we have to get like 11, and Hunter is pretty shit at this challenge, so thankfully it's pretty easy to beat him, unlike with the Popcorn Challenge from uh, Magma Cone and Spyro 2, oh screw that challenge, I used to find that challenge really annoying <laughs> in Magma Cone. How do we go forward, is it square? Yeah. Right, so, we don't lose any points for capturing the Octopi, but we don't gain anything we do so just I don't know what those octopi are even there for I think they're there to mislead you but yeah we have to get the manta rays we don't get the octopuses octopi or whatever oh for goodness sake capture there we go what did that count pretty sure it wrapped around him there we go right I'm just being hunter I think maybe it's based on luck so I'm pretty sure hunter's always done shit oh well I'm still beating him and I'm being very fortunate here actually because usually after you fired out your first net, you could keep pressing the circle and it takes forever for him to fire his next one. It takes like it's like he's taking time to reload or something, but Yeah, thankfully I'm getting a lot of them in the first uh, try here. Like my aiming's not too bad. My aiming's usually pretty bad in games. Come on, just one more. There we go! Got that done much faster than I hoped. <laughs> than I hoped? No, much faster than I thought. I'm glad I got it done faster. Yes, and I don't think there's a second phase in this one either. There's a lot of chances I don't have a second phase in this game. Time constraints. <laughs> hey, it's Krishna Murray. Krishna what kind of name is that? It just sounds like one you just pulled out your arse. I mean, is that an actual name? I'm sorry, if anyone actually has that name, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to be a bitch there, but it just doesn't sound like a name. Okay, you, you do that. Like Not <laughs> like I'm going to come back. God's sake. Do they really? Are you sure they're not swimming all over the water floor because they're like, Oh, for God's sake, make it stop, make it stop. S make it stop, dude. Sorry. I think we have no more missions with Hunter in this game. Yeah, he pretty much makes no appearances for the rest of the game. We just have a mission with him in Crop Talk Country in that level, and we don't see him for the rest of the game until the final cutscene. And he's supposed to be one of our main allies. So that you could just tell they're really up against uh, time constraints in this game, considering, like, that we don't see much of him at all. So you can open a cutscene and two mini games and that's it. Well yeah, and we, we also get this like one instruction in the home world and that's about it. And the next challenge of this game is a pretty fun one. It's pretty hard, but it's actually a quite enjoyable one.
And did I just see another gem fall there? Yeah, oh, I did. Oh, that's weird. Why wasn't it there already? I just saw it falling from the sky. Must have spawned, like, loaded late or something. I'm pretty sure there's one right here that actually hovers in midair. Yeah, it's like, it's sitting on nothing. It's just sort of sitting on midair. I wasn't sure if that was just a glitch last time, but now nah, it's just sitting in midair. That one is too. Didn't probe that in very well. Wow! More octopus sounds from Spyro 3. Make your own new sound effects, lazy. <laughs> There's the occasional enemy in this game that has their own sound effects when you defeat them, but mostly they just rehash ones from Spyro 3. <laughs> Luckily, I think this is the last underwater part in the game. All the rest of it's on shore. So that's good because all these underwater parts really annoy me in terms of trying to find everything. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Such a beautiful music. I love this soundtrack. And like in other Spyro games, well, not so much Spyro 1, but in Spyro 2 and 3, well, in Spyro 3, the non great hits version, Spyro 2 and 3, there's some levels that have re soundtracks like Fracture Hills, Reuses, Idol Springs. In Jurassic Jungle, that soundtrack is actually used in a challenge in this level. The challenge I said I liked, the the Tiki Bongo challenge. Yeah, the soundtrack to Jurassic Jungle goes to that challenge in this level, so that's pretty interesting. Like, all of the last levels, all the levels in Last Homeworld in Spyro 3 are reused from Sunshine Springs, and Fracture Hills is reused from Idle Springs, which is pretty ironic because they both end in Springs. But, um, a huge line of assets here, you can clearly tell they were just trying to use up gem space. <laughs> Another Tiki one, it's sort of sitting there casually. And I can hear, uh, not very likely near, uh, Dragonfly going, yeah, 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 yeah. He's probably very far away, but he's sounding nearer than he is. Well, I don't think it's exactly the same soundtrack that's in Jurassic uh, Jungle, but it sounds very similar. Now, I remember there was a Tiki here that took Alex by surprise when I was being with her, and she had got such a fright, it was funny. Yeah, that one here. It does hide itself very well. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, okay, I got it. I think I'd have probably had to jump down anyway, because it looks like it was falling. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the ladders can be pretty glitchy in this game. When I played Cloud9 at one point, when I actually got to the top of the ladder, he still kept climbing and climbing and climbing, so he was just climbing on only a wall. <laughs> oh, gosh, that was close. Not that I would have died or anything when I fell, but it would have just been annoying. <laughs> Triangle. Ooh. A lot of chests around here, they just sort of scattered. See, they, they don't look very neatly placed, they're just sort of scattered all over the place in this game, the chests and that. Well, I'm complaining, I'm kind of glad there's more collectibles in the levels, because I just love the feeling of collecting things in this. You can wait. Oh yeah, I think we have to head bash that, yeah, to free him. Can he still talk to us? Yeah, he does. It looks like he could just break through that easily, because his arms are his, fa his arms and face is going through anyway. Ask a bit nicer, you prick. Get me out of this cage! Is he a voice by a different voice actor creator? So he sounds different. Also, he sounded more echoed than the rest of them. Can you still flame him from this side? No, you can't, okay. We'll just head bash this and get him out of, get him out of that cage! But, that didn't work. And I just realised there's a face carved into that wall there. That's pretty creepy. <laughs> it's quite discreet, but yeah, there's a face carving there. It's quite a creepy one, and I think he'll give us a dragonfly. And even though we free him, he's like, help me! He's not paying attention, and he's like, blind or something. Here. Oh, slow loading. God's sake. See? <laughs> Hello, the gate's open! <laughs> huh? It is? Oh, well. What do you know? Look at that. <laughs> silly me. Thanks for saving me. You're welcome. <laughs> you didn't see here's the dragonfly, you just boom, there he is. Still! Aw. Such a spicy name. <laughs> or herby name, whatever. But, um, Dill, I instantly thought of Phil and Lil from Rugrats just there. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Now, we'll see if we can get this Dragonfly Stray because he's annoying. This one. Yay! He didn't get very far. Awesome. Scuttlebutt. There we go. I mentioned earlier there was a Scuttlebutt in this game. What kind of name is that? Sounds like something that Bart Simpson would probably call someone. So, I'll just get him quickly before we can hurt anyone. But yeah, if you don't get him straight away, he'll fly all the way over towards 
the, where that ledge is at the very end and all the way back and it, it's just so annoying to get him if you don't get him straight away so I'm kind of glad I got him there so I didn't have to go through the hassle of chasing the mages on end. Dun dun dun, oh! Oh, I thought I charged that, never mind. It's funny, because those balls, you can actually destroy them with your bubbles as well. Okay, so we just breathe fire on this cannon, and that knocks down this wall, and there's a lot of treasure right here. And a dragonfly, I think, come to think of it. There's a yellow dragonfly, yes, like, and a beast sparks. And yes, I got them all in one go. Usually I have to loop that like three times eventually to get them all, but I got them all in one go. Awesome. There we go, I've got him in one as well. Plato. Plato, whatever. But Plato. Oh no, it's Pato from Pokéo, never mind. But I'm getting kind of fortunate in this level. <laughs> Better not speak too soon. <laughs> oh, he went up that pretty fast. So technically, there's just a couple more gems to get in this level, and then there's a challenge with the bongos that I was mentioning. And that's the exit right there, but we're not going to go through it yet. Remember I was playing this level with Alex, she was like, Oh, let's just leave now. I'm like, no, I have to get everything. I, I like to play games 100%. <laughs> I'm a bit of a perfectionist that way. Ah! Also, I think I mentioned in my Let's Plays I heard that you can't get the option to seek out any gems you've missed in this game, unlike in Spyro 2 and 3, whereas in fact you actually can, but you have to actually uh, complete the game and defeat Repto in order to backtrack to levels to find the missing uh, gems. So I'm just really hoping that when I glide over here, get these last gems over here, I'm going to get a dun 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 noise because this level is so annoying in terms of trying to find things. Drat. Right guys, so I've definitely missed some gems, but we'll worry about them after I've done this challenge. <laughs> oh wait, no, I think I just, oh no, never mind, sorry. Yeah, I'll just have a quick look back through the level to see if there's any missed after this challenge, but we'll just try and enjoy this challenge first. This is a two-phase challenge. The first one's very easy, but the second one's pretty hard. Like, pretty much, you have to remember a sequence, like, like, you have to remember one sequence, then you remember two sequences, and three sequences, and four sequences, and five sequences. It kind of reminds me in this puzzle from the Time Machine, um, the... Do -do 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 From the Time Machine, I can't explain it well, the... Queen Victoria's Horn, or something like that. In Medieval 2. It's similar to that. You pretty much just have to remember the pop pattern as it goes along. And this guy's got such a funny voice. Oh, that tiki beep beep boom boom. Boom. Yeah, that soundtrack's from Jurassic Jungle. It's playing right now. And Rod Tikini. Tikini. Rod Tikini. That's his name. He just he speaks like his own language. It's like, hello, Spyro Unga. We Tiki get ready for Tiki tourist lao. Funnily enough, I bet you a child probably understand that because that's a child's language. <laughs> Is he like some wooden man? He, he doesn't look like a person wearing a wooden mask. If you look behind him, he just looks like he's made of all wood. So he's like alive tikis. He's got like a coconut face. Yes. Pow! <laughs> <laughs> so I just remember like These make very funny noises these guys, I can't remember what they sound like though. So yeah, the first phase is not that hard, the second one's a bit more tricky. So okay, I might not talk for this part so I can hear it. This one's not tricky. Oh, well, that's pretty basic. I quite like it when they work it like that. <laughs> ah, damn it. There we go, that's the first one done, and that was just only starting to get tricky, so... <laughs> yeah, the next one's pretty damn difficult. Cause I remember in Big Brain Academy, in Reverse Retention on Expert, you get seven... 
stuff. No. You get five Torque Reds at the most. But this one, you have to remember, like, 10 or 12 on the next sequence. Have a have prize for Spiral. Then it's a Dragonfly. Oh, the shock. Ooh. What's this one called? Terral. I remember I was like, Terral. Sounds like a very Italian name. Trouble with the trolley, eh? Sorry. Hell yeah, I am. Right, we're going to ace this, guys. Okay, let's see if I say nothing through this scene. Will I actually get through it? There's a challenge not seen, sorry. That's crazy to remember the first one. Welcome, boah. Sorry. Better not distract myself. I pressed X. Oh shit, I lost concentration there. Oh no, I got it. Sorry guys, I'm somewhat grumbling. Yes! I did that in the first go! Oh my god, I remember I'm a long play and when I did it with Alex. It took me like 10 tries and I did that in my first go. Awesome. I think it was quite an easy sequence to remember though, in comparison to some others you could po possibly get. <laughs> That's wow! <laughs> what kind of world do you live in, boy? <laughs> like, we Tiki knew you were a big drama. We Tiki knew. We Tiki knew that you were a big drama champion. Please take Tiki fist for Tiki reward Tiki. It's like he says Tiki between every word. Like, Maverick. Hey, it's Maverick. I think that's all the dragonflies. Spiral best drama ever. I have no more dragonflies, but drumming fun. Not a fun challenge. I can see myself going back to that one. But, yeah, not for now. Too bad. Yeah, that was 10 out of 10. You just pop up for a second there. That's 10 out of 10 dragonflies. So let's see if we can find this last gem that we're missing. I'll probably cut up to when I find it, because this level could be a nightmare for finding stuff you've missed, so... <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, I... I <laughs> I was just getting tantalized by that loading screen, it was just looping my eyes around the right. So can we just see how many we've actually missed, just to get a re-briefing, wee briefing, of how much I'm looking for. I am... Okay, but it looks like this, I'm probably missing either three red gems, or a green gem and a red gem. So, yeah, annoying. <laughs> so, yeah guys, I'll just see you back at that part, wherever I find these gems I'm missing. Hey guys, look at this pretty cool glitch I just managed to get here, because when I was in the middle of jumping out of the water there, um, you sort of imitate jumping out of the water while I was still in the water now he still feels like he's jumping out. It's sort of frozen in place. Oh there we go. It's sorted now. <laughs> okay I'll just start looking for the gems again. Okay guys so I found one gem sitting here so I think we're either looking for two more red gems or one more green gem. I'm not quite sure what it is but we will find it. <laughs> Funnily enough guys I never actually saw the gem when I was in the water but just from the top I just saw a slight figure in the corner shining away so that's it down there finally. I was looking for it for quite a while so quite glad that's it finally over. Yes it is a level with 900 gems. So that's got all the gems and all the dragonflies so that's us completed uh, Luau Island. 
And I was just like, no god, we're so far from the exit, we might as well just exit level. But nah, we're going to go through the proper exit, because I just realised that we can actually get there from the entrance now. Because <laughs> there's a swirly that formed. So there we go, guys. That's been my redo of Luau Island for you. And, oh, pff, just pff, right into the wall, because the portal's right on a wall. So, next time I will probably be playing Cloud9 for you, that's level 4, and the people who help out in that level are voiced by Tom Kenny, same person who plays um, Spyro, who funnily enough is also the same person who plays Spongebob, and that's what that level kind of reminded me of Spongebob, and apparently Tom Kenny plays a lot of the characters in this game. That must be something to do with the fact they couldn't get a lot of actors for this game, but uh, yeah guys, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next part. Take care!